Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Aunt Becky. I'm Daniel. I'm Pop Pop. I'm Tracy. I'm Matt. I'm Callie. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. And, and girls. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm. But one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. Welcome back everyone, it's so nice to see you. Currently we're finishing off morning chores. We've just about got all the animals fed and taken care of. We've gone through our greenhouses, those look good. And now we're just making our final rounds, checking on all the calves. We just built this little pen that now houses four calves. We added a cool little water bowl and these animals have been enjoying themselves. Last night into this morning, like clockwork, we received another half inch of rain, which is something we're not complaining about because the crops could really use it. The next thing we're gonna be working on is out in the fields and we'll be heading there shortly. We've got a few more things to do here and then we're on our way. Something I will make mention of is that we cleaned up all our cattle pens. Uh, they were looking a little sloppy and we wanted to add some fresh bedding in and take out all the old slop that was there. So we were able to get that accomplished yesterday and it looks a lot nicer down here. The weather's been kind of playing tricks on us. It's been much cooler than it was a few weeks ago, but the humidity is so high, you sweat just as much. It's definitely not the most fun uh, weather to be working in, but what are you gonna do? Job needs to get done. We made a little detour in what we were working on. We needed to seed some cabbage and broccoli. Now this is for us, and this is a very late, late planting. We hope we're gonna be able to harvest all this stuff. We already did two trays of cabbage, as you just saw, and now we're gonna grab a few trays of broccoli. Now we did two trays of cabbage. There's 512 cells, so we've got over a thousand plants of cabbage that we're gonna be able to put in late season. And then we're also gonna have a little over a thousand, 1500 of broccoli. And that, that's a lot, especially for how late this stuff is being seeded. We hope we're gonna be able to pick it all. We're using uh, early day varieties of cabbage, so it, they don't take long to get to maturity. Same with the broccoli. That way we might be able to squeak out one last harvest by the end of the year. The reason we're doing this, the last few years, uh, we have not had cold temperatures until late into November and December. So we've run out of broccoli beginning of October. So we're trying to get some broccoli for the farm market and cabbage for October is what we're shooting for. Now here we are at the plants that we had seeded not too long ago. Now this is cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower. There's some kohlrabi here. There's some red cabbage, savoy. And this is where we're gonna be adding the trays that we had just seeded to. Now we did add some cauliflower in there and we also, we seeded some kohlrabi for Callie. So she's gonna love that when the time comes. But you can see this stuff will be ready to go in the soil soon. And then the stuff we had just seeded, well, that's gonna be a few weeks behind it. Many of you that have been watching for some time, you already kind of know our methods, but for those that are new, what we're doing is just trying to extend our harvest for as long as possible. If we can extend our harvest, that's only gonna benefit us in the long run. We're gonna have fresh veggies for the local people in the area, and that's gonna keep bringing people to our farm market. Take a picture of the, all the blossoms for your mother. <laughs> On the pumpkins, yeah. <laughs> Mom needs to get picking blossoms. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful out here? We've got our pumpkins all the way over there, our zucchini, our pickling cucumbers, regular cucumbers, and then check out these tomatoes here. Just wow. And then if we look all the way over there, we got some peppers that look absolutely incredible. Now the real reason why we're out here is not just to look at all this beautiful stuff, but we need to get started picking. What we're gonna be picking today is our pickling cucumbers. We've got a long row here that needs to be taken care of. Now you guys know we've been harvesting pickling cucumbers for a very long time off our first planting, but we're getting started with the second planting today and there's a very good reason for that. Now the reason why we're picking the second planting first is so that we don't bring any 
any disease from our first planting over into our second planting. These plants are clean, they are beautiful, and a quick look helps us to appreciate that there is definitely no disease in here. So we wouldn't wanna bring any from another crop into it. So that's the big reason for getting started with our second planting first today, and I think we're gonna have a good time. These look beautiful. These plants are very full, so when you start picking, you really have to search because you don't want to miss anything. The next time we come through and pick, a lot of these cucumbers will be twice, if not three times the size. And this is about the size we're looking for. Thankfully, we haven't found too many that look like this one. So that means we got here at just the right time. This is our first time picking the second planting, and I think we're all very happy with how the cucumbers look. Now when it comes to farming, it can be as simple as just taking some seeds, putting them in the soil, you know, waiting some time out, and then harvesting your crop. But when it comes to what we're doing here on the farm, there's a little bit more that's involved with it, especially if we're trying to make a living. For one thing, when you have such a concentration of one type of crop in a certain area, disease can become a very big problem. Now, sadly, we could stand here for hours and talk about all the different types of diseases that plants could get. But when we're looking at our pickling cucumbers here, Two of the most common that they face is downy and powdery mildew. Now in the beginning part of the year, that's not too much of a problem. We don't face much disease with our first planting. But as we start moving into our second planting, that's when we get a little more cautious. Some of you may be curious why we face more disease later on into the year. And it's actually pretty interesting why we face more disease later on in the year. The area where we live in Northeast Pennsylvania for much of the beginning part of the year, we will get our air or the weather patterns come out of the north, out of Canada. So we face uh, weather conditions out of Canada for much of the first part of the year, but as we get later into the year, we get our weather from the south. So from Florida, Georgia, Texas, those areas down there, the air currents will come up to where we live in Northeast Pennsylvania. Now we always have this air mass coming out of the north that is swirling down, and this air mass coming out of the south that is swirling up, and they will constantly meet and then dip and push on each other. So occasionally we're getting air from Canada, occasionally we're getting air from the south. Now when we're getting air from Canada, it is a little on the cooler side, so it's not as nice for when we're growing certain types of crops. But now that we've gotten to the later part of the year, the warmer air that's been coming out of the south is really pushing the crops, but it's bringing along some problems with it. See, up in the north, much of the diseases that affect these crops are killed off by frost and freeze. So that's why in the beginning part of the year, when we're still getting our air out of the north, we don't face much disease, it's really, really nice. But now that we're getting into the later part of the year, our air mass is coming out of the south, and along with it is disease. The disease comes with the winds that we receive, and uh, sadly it becomes a bigger problem the later we get into the year. It becomes such a problem that we can lose entire crops in a matter of weeks, and we definitely don't wanna deal with that. So with this information, what do we do? Well, here on the farm, we add different types of minerals specifically for our pickling cucumbers, our regular cucumbers, and our zucchini to fight against those different types of mildews. Now, we have to use different minerals for all different crops, but specifically, I'm just talking about the pickling cucumbers because we're working on the second planting. So what we will do is we will load up our sprayer with those minerals that we need. We will come through and spray our crops, and then that will allow us to fight against those two different types of mildews. Now, for where you live, I'm not sure if you're gonna have the same problem we do, but again, I go back to that's why we're picking our second planting first. There's no disease in the second planting yet, but as the plants get older, it's a lot harder for them to fight off the disease and to become more susceptible to it. So by picking our second planting first, 
we're saving this planting by not uh, bringing over the disease. Because if we went and picked the old planting and then came over here and picked this, well, we're just bringing the disease right over. And that's something I'd recommend to you if you plant different plantings in your garden. So if you have one type of crop and then you have the same crop, it's just younger, don't pick that second crop second. Pick the second crop first. That way you're not taking disease back and forth. Those are just a few things that people don't really think about when it comes to farming. You know, when I was younger, I never really thought about how air masses could affect us. But now that I've gotten older and I've done a little bit of research on it, we really see the importance of paying attention to the weather. Not only because rain is nice and strong winds and hail can give us fits, um, but because when we know where our air mass is coming from, we know what to expect out of our crops. It's something I think that would be really interesting for you if you just studied a little bit. Uh, another thing is if you have young children, that'd be something neat to share with them, like a little project. Just try it out. Take some time and look into it. And I think it'll benefit all of you in the long run. It may not be as detrimental to your crop or it may not affect your crop as much as it does with us when we have so much in one area but it'd still be something neat to uh, look into. So I, I just like to talk about that every year. We get so many people and I like to share little bits of information that we think about and that we look forward to uh, so that everybody who's raising their own produce, whether it's on small scale or large scale, can benefit and have a better crop because that's what we're all trying to do. We're just trying to raise some food that we can eat, right? But yeah, that's enough about that for now. I gotta get back to picking. If you guys are interested in things like that though, just let me know down in the comments. I do my best to read all of them. And specifically when people wanna know stuff about how I feel about the weather, or you have questions about a certain crop, I try and incorporate that into future videos. So make sure you leave some comments down below. And I don't usually mention this in the middle part of the video, but do me a favor, go hit that like button. It helps us out a ton. something I'll say ever since I now have a three-year-old uh, my spelling is getting much better yeah I'm, I'm quicker with it I, that's yeah. for sure me and uh, Tracy we're talking about going to uh, s-t-a-r-b-u-c-k-s uh -huh. but we didn't know if we were going for sure so we couldn't say yeah you had to spell it out. yeah whether we were actually going or not and then Tracy's like maybe it would be nice to get her a c-a-k-e-p-o-p -P. and I was like I bet she would have liked that <laughs> it's funny because Lauren and I will be going around the house just spelling things. Yeah, for no And like, reason. she's so good at spelling yeah. that I have to like stop for a second and like... Yeah, what did you just spell? What are you yelling about over there? Some people call zucchini courgettes or courgeot. Enough talking about fries. Get back to work. Who's talking about fries? <laughs> Look at that. Eggplant. Two eggplants. Ooh. Check it out. Woohoo! We just got the second planting of pickling cucumbers all harvested. Daniel is finishing off the zucchini. We are now moving on to the first planting of pickling cucumbers to get that all picked. And hey, check it out. You see all these holes in our mulch? Yeah, that's our latest planting of pickling cucumbers and zucchini and regular cucumbers. We direct seeded them into the soil. I know, we're wild. But hey, the soil temperatures are warm enough to where we can do that now and not have any problems. These plants are just so sad compared to the ones we were just picking. So not alive. But uh, yeah, we're gonna pick them anyway. You know what I just realized we have not mentioned? Dad is picking a little slower today. He's also got a slight limp. You wanna tell him what happened, Dad? Cow kicked me. Yeah, he got kicked by a cow on his thigh. And when I say the bruise is like that big on his thigh, it is bad. So he's been a little slow with uh, bending over and picking, but we're not gonna blame him. That, that would not be fun to get kicked by a cow then start picking. Look at this right here. Look at all these cantaloupes. That's a nice size cantaloupe. What's up over here, watermelon? Are you ready to go yet? Ah, uh, pretty close. Not yet. We're getting there. I just noticed a crimson sweet watermelons. Look at the size of them. They are big. Not ready to pick yet. But boy, they're getting close. Like I know we can't stop picking right now because we got to get these pickling cucumbers finished. I'm on a snack. But break. <laughs> yeah, I want a watermelon break so bad. Look at this thing. That's next to Matt's head. That's how big this watermelon is. It's not that big. And look at that cantaloupe. Oh yeah. I'm sure that's ready. Yeah, I picked it. You want to open it up? No, I'm going to sell that. No, I want to eat it. You can't open it. Oh. We got finished off with picking the first planting of pickling cucumbers and zucchini. 
Daniel is now loading everything up on the wagon. He's gonna be taking it home. We went for a quick walk through the cantaloupes together. We noticed there's a lot of cantaloupes here that are not ready to pick just yet, but they're getting close. Another thing we noted is that there's plenty of watermelons here that we could probably pick up. Uh, we'll probably do that closer towards the weekend. That way where they're there on the weekend. Some of these watermelons are just absolutely gorgeous. This one looks like a bird was hanging out with it. But look at this one, just giant. This parsley smells so good. I'd love to make some pesto. All that basil we have, we need to do it. With the parsley, I'm just trying to leave the center of the plant intact so that I can continue growing where that new growth is right near the center. Rest of it is coming with me though. Parsley is one of those things you may not see as harvest all too often, but we definitely pick and sell a lot of it. Especially when it's fresh, it's like one of the best things you can have back at the farm market. Lots of herbs. People are always looking for the herbs. While you were walking around over here, Dad, did you find any nice tomatoes? I picked eggplant. So you weren't even looking for tomatoes? No, I was picking eggplant. Oh, I thought you were getting tomatoes. I see tomatoes over there. Who grabbed tomatoes? I did. Oh, it's easy to see that the tomatoes look really good. I mean, just on this one plant, look how many there are. That is... That's good news. It's like that on every single plant. There are so many tomatoes here. This is gonna be fun. It's kind of hard to see too from the just the top side of the plant, but once you start digging a little bit, boy, there is some tomatoes there. Long tomato turning, check it out. Now I know there's plenty others that are getting started on picking tomatoes or their tomatoes are just changing, but even so, it's just so exciting for us to have our fields really start producing. We've got round tomatoes down there. We've got some plum tomatoes here, and we've got a few different plantings all over the place. And in no time, we're gonna be harvesting a lot of canning tomatoes. Now I already got the flat parsley, but I also need some curly parsley. So I'm back out here picking. What's wrong? Nothing. Matt's complaining about the windshield on. I put the windshield on for Cali because it was raining the other day. And ever since then, all I've heard was complaining. Do you can still got a breeze? It's lunch today. It looks like we've got some sausage hoagies here. We've also got some noodles and cabbage. Halushki. Yeah, halushki. And then we've also got some cantaloupe and yellow watermelon. Hey everyone, what's up? It's uh, the next day now. Yeah, funny how that works. When I left off, we had just finished up our lunch. And then for the afternoon, I had some things to take care of, so I didn't have the camera. And I asked the boys to take the camera with them, but uh, they forgot. Sorry. But again, that's okay because everybody's got stuff to do. So they're probably busy and just weren't thinking about it. You know, bringing the camera around, that's kind of my job. I'm the one that's always thinking about that. But anyway, we have the camera with us again today. We are heading out to pick some sweet corn. We have quite a few orders. On this truck at the moment, we've got four bins that need to be filled, which is a lot of corn. We just got our first bin picked. We only needed 400 ears. So Daniel is gonna take this back to the truck. That was for a specific order. And what's been really nice is if we finish this little patch we're working on, that means this entire field has been completely picked through at least once. And the fact that we were able to go through once and get all of the larger first ears is a really good sign for us. Uh, if we were not able to do that, some of the sweet corn would have gotten too ripe or it wasn't ripe enough yet, but the fact that it all just matured together was really good. And then we can rotary drop it off and we can dig potatoes. And once this is completely mowed off, like dad said, it's gonna be a lot easier to harvest potatoes because we won't have to worry about driving on this corn at all. and take care of something else. So I'm leaving the camera with Beatty. Here you go, Beatty. Well, everyone, 
we got finished off with the cabbage and that basically ended my day. I had to go home and take care of some stuff and I've been here ever since. So since I've been home all day, yeah, I didn't get to do too much more filming. But hey, I wanted to say thank you for everybody that was watching. This is where we're going to end the video today. I will see you guys next time. Bye bye